Welcome to worship here at Christ Lutheran Church this morning. We're going to jump right in. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Please stand for confession. If we say we have no sin, we deceive ourselves and the truth is not in us. We take a few moments for silent reflection. Most merciful God, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. Masika. Have mercy on us, forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your holy ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. Almighty God, in his mercy, has given his Son, Jesus Christ, to die for you, and for his sake forgives you all of your sins. Therefore, as a called and ordained servant of Christ and by his authority, I forgive you all of your sins. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia. Worthy is Christ the Lamb who was slain, whose blood set us free to be people of God. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Power, riches, wisdom, and strength. And honor, blessing, and glory are His. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Sing with all the people of God and join in the hymn of all creation. Blessing, honor, glory, and might be 
to God and the Lamb forever. Amen. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. For the Lamb who was slain has begun his reign. Alleluia. This is the feast of victory for our God. Alleluia, alleluia, alleluia. Let us pray. Almighty God, grant that we who have celebrated the Lord's resurrection may by your grace confess in our life and conversation that Jesus is Lord and God. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Our first reading is recorded in Acts chapter 5, verses 29 through 42. But Peter and the apostles answered, We must obey God rather than men. The God of our fathers raised Jesus, whom you killed by hanging him on a tree. God exalted him at his right hand as leader and savior to give repentance to Israel and forgiveness of sins. And we are witnesses to these things, and so is the Holy Spirit, whom God has given to those who obey him. When they heard this, they were enraged and wanted to kill them. But a Pharisee in the council named Gamaliel, a teacher of the law held in honor by all the people, stood up and gave orders to put the men outside for a little while. And he said to them, men of Israel, take care what you are about to do with these men. For before these days, Theodos rose up, claiming to be somebody, and a number of men, about 400, joined him. He was killed, and all who followed him were dispersed and came to nothing. After him, Judas the Galilean rose up in the days of the census and drew away some of the people after him. He too perished, and all who followed him were scattered. So in the present case, I tell you, keep away from these men and let them alone. For if this plan or this undertaking is of man, it will fail. But if it is of God, you will not be able to overthrow them. You might even be found opposing God. So they took his advice and when they had called in the apostles, they beat them and charged them not to speak in the name of Jesus and let them go. Then they left the presence of the council, rejoicing that they were counted worthy to suffer dishonor for the name. And every day in the temple and from house to house, they did not cease teaching and preaching that the Christ is Jesus. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God.
is from 1 Peter chapter 1, verses 3 through 9. Blessed be the God and Father of our Lord Jesus Christ. According to his great mercy, he has caused us to be born again to a living hope through the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead, to an inheritance that is imperishable, undefiled, and unfading, kept in heaven for you, who by God's power are being guarded through faith for a salvation ready to be revealed in the last time. In this you rejoice, though now for a little while, if necessary, you have been grieved by various trials, so that the tested genuineness of your faith, more precious than gold that perishes though it is tested by fire, may be found to result in praise and glory and honor at the revelation of Jesus Christ. Though you have not seen him, you love him. Though you do not now see him, you believe in him and rejoice with joy that is, in, that is inexpressible and filled with glory obtaining the outcome of your faith, the salvation of your souls. This is the word of the Lord. The Holy Gospel according to St. John, the 20th chapter. On the evening of that day, the first day of the week, the doors being locked where the disciples were for fear of the Jews, Jesus came and stood among them and said to them, Peace be with you. When he had said this, he showed them his hands and his side. Then the disciples were glad when they saw the Lord. Jesus said to them again, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said to them, Receive the Holy Spirit. If you forgive the sins of any, they are forgiven them. If you withhold forgiveness from any, it is withheld. Now Thomas, one of the twelve, called the twin, was not with them when Jesus came. So the other disciples told him, we've seen the Lord. But he said to them, unless I see in his hands the mark of the nails and place my finger into the mark of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. Eight days later, his disciples were inside again and Thomas was with them. Although the doors were locked, Jesus came and stood among them and said, Peace be with you. Then he said to Thomas, Put your finger here and see my hands, and put out your hand and place it in my side. Do not disbelieve, but believe. Thomas answered him, My Lord and my God. Jesus said to him, Have you believed because you have seen me? Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed. Now Jesus, did many other si <clears throat> now Jesus did many other signs in the presence of the disciples, which are not written in this book, but these are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. The Gospel of our Lord.
Okay, I'm going to try something. We'll see if you remember this from the beginning of the service. I'm going to say something, and then you guys respond back. Christ is risen. Good. We're going to let the adults help us, too. We're going to do it one more time. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Jesus, we celebrated this last Sunday, came back from the dead. Do you know the name of the day when he died? It was a Friday. Good Friday, yes. Wait, that's weird. How come the day on which Jesus died is called Good Friday? Yeah, because he died on a cross to forgive our sins. So that's the day when all our sins are forgiven. And then what happened on the Sunday after? Yes, on Easter Sunday, three days later, he rose from the dead. That's kind of amazing. Have any of you ever seen like a bug that was dead? Do they ever come back to life? No. A dead worm? Yeah. You fly? Yeah. They don't really come back to life, do they? What about, have any of you ever had a pet, a pet that died? It's kind of sad. Yeah. They don't really come back to life either, do they? Do you have any grandpas and grandmas or great-grandpas and grandmas who've passed away? Yeah. My, all of my grandpas and grandmas have passed away. They don't come back to life either. But Jesus did. How'd that happen? He is the Lord. He is not only a human being like us, but He is also God. And God the Father raised Him from the dead. And why did God the Father raise Him from the dead? We'll see if somebody else can get an answer, but you'll be our backup. Why did Jesus come back to life? Well, let's see. For whom did Jesus die? Yeah, He came back to life for us so that we can have eternal life too. Only we heard today that His followers, they were all in a room and they were scared that maybe they'd get in trouble, so they had the door locked, and Jesus all of a sudden was there with them. Yeah, like somehow He was there. So even though He's a person, a human being like us, because He is God, He was able to get through the door, and He was there and He said, peace be with you, and He told them, if you forgive anybody's sins, they're forgiven. But there was one person missing that day. Do you remember the name of the person who was missing? Thomas. Good. Thomas was missing, and the disciples said, we saw the Lord. Now, Thomas, in his mind, he's going, wait, 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 wait. I know that Jesus died. Like, I saw them put him on the cross, and I saw them, like, stab his side. That was bad. I saw him, and nobody comes back to life. I'm not going to believe it unless I can actually like touch his hands where the nails were and touch his side where the spear went in. And you know what happened one week later? One week later, they were all together and Thomas was with them and Jesus showed up. He was alive. Jesus showed up alive and do you think he got mad at Thomas? No. He just said, Thomas, why don't you believe? And then he put out his hand and he said, Thomas, you can touch my hand if that will help you believe. You can even put your hand in my side where the spear was if that will help you believe. Well, Jesus is now risen from the dead and ascended into heaven, so you and I don't get to see him right now. But we have all these wonderful stories of people who saw him after he rose from the dead. So that's how we know he rose from the dead for us. But there's something even more amazing. And that is, it doesn't sound amazing, but it actually is. Every Sunday, he sends somebody to preach his word. And the Holy Spirit comes when you hear the good news about Jesus and comes into your heart and helps you to believe in Jesus. And someday, you will get to see Jesus face to face. 
You know when that's going to happen? Yeah, or when he comes back to bring us with him to heaven. Christ is risen. Alleluia. Let's pray. We thank you, Heavenly Father, for sending Jesus to die and to rise from the dead. Send your Holy Spirit to us each day, every day when we hear God's word from our moms and dads and grandpas and grandmas, every Sunday when we hear God's word in church and in Sunday school. Send your Holy Spirit so that we can believe in Jesus and one day live with you and him and the Holy Spirit forever. In Jesus' name, amen. All right, you may return to your seats, or actually, I think some of you are following Miss Charlene, right? There we are. We'll do it one more time. Christ is risen. risen Alleluia. Grace, mercy, and peace to you from God our Father and our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Have you ever felt like a doubting Thomas? If so, then if not, then I wonder if you're telling the truth, although there are some Christians who've never doubted, but most of us have had our moments of doubt. And if that's the case, then God's Word is His gift to you. It says at the end of today's reading, Jesus did many other miraculous signs in the presence of His disciples, which are not recorded in this book, but these, the whole story of Jesus' ministry and all the signs that He did, these are written down on paper so that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in His name. We hear the testimony of eyewitnesses, we receive the Holy Spirit, and we know the joy of sins forgiven. God's Word puts our, death to de- our doubt to death and gives us life in Jesus' name. Doubt operates on lots of levels. One of the, the kind of basic levels where doubt operates is the kind of doubt that Thomas displayed. He said, unless I see the hands, see in his hands the marks of the nails and place my finger into the marks of the nails and place my hand into his side, I will never believe. You see, what the other disciples had told Thomas was just too good to be true. We've seen the Lord, they were saying. They're claiming that they saw the Lord Jesus, the same man who had been put to death on a cross the Friday before. He had died. That much was certain. He had hung on a cross between two thieves. And when the soldiers came around to break their legs to make sure that they would die before the end of the day, Jesus was already dead. They confirmed it by putting a spear into his side, and the water and the blood came out of that wound, showing the Roman soldiers he was dead. Uh, It's been said Romans were very good at killing people. They did not mess up. Jesus had died a horrible death, and dead men just do not come back to life. So Thomas refused to believe, even though the disciples said they had seen Jesus. Honestly, it's kind of that way in our day. Book after book has been written supposedly debunking the resurrection of Jesus because it's just too good to be true. In fact, I've even seen a book that went so far as to say that Jesus never existed, which is kind of an audacious claim, if there was ever an audacious claim. We'll come back to that one. The problem, of course, is not the people out there who doubt. The problem is that doubt can infect our minds as well. What if Jesus really did not rise from the dead? What if the Bible, the gospel accounts of his life, death, and resurrection are just propaganda or myths? And how would you ever prove this stuff anyway? Back to John chapter 20, verse 31. These are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing you may have life in his name. In the end, the insidious doubt that wonders how you could ever prove anything about Jesus is self-defeating. After all, how could you ever prove anything about George Washington or Julius Caesar 
or your great-grandparents who show up in that black and white picture. Maybe they didn't exist either. How could you know anything in life? That kind of doubt. How can I prove anything? How can I know anything? That kind of doubt is paralyzing or else it's disingenuous, right? Either there's nothing you can count on and so you're just paralyzed or it's disingenuous because you're just chanting the mantra of doubt in order to reject Jesus outright. But the fact is we can know things about George Washington and Julius Caesar and your great-grandparents because there were eyewitnesses who saw what they did, who wrote down their memories. There are people who've taken records about your ancestors. In the same way, we can know things about Jesus because there were eyewitnesses to his life, death, and resurrection. And what they saw has been written down. In fact, John wrote in 1 John chapter 1, I'm going to read a long Bible passage, that which was from the beginning, which we have heard, as I read, think through, like, listen to the senses that are being appealed to. That which was from the beginning, which we have heard, which we have seen with our eyes, which we've looked upon, which we have touched with our hands concerning the word of life. The life was made manifest, and we have seen it and testify it to it and proclaim to you the eternal life, which was with the Father and was made manifest to us, that which we have seen and heard, we proclaim also to you, so that you too may have fellowship with us. What is given to you and me in the Gospels of Matthew, Mark, Luke, and John, what is given to us in the Acts of the Apostles and in all of the Epistles is eyewitness testimony to the deeds, death, and resurrection of our Savior Jesus. The Lord your God knew that you would need to hear about Jesus, about His life, death, and resurrection, so that you could believe and have the eternal life which Jesus came to win for you. For that reason, the Holy Spirit of God moved eyewitnesses of Jesus' ministry to record what they saw. In the Scriptures, in the Bible, we hear the testimony of eyewitnesses to Jesus' ministry and to His resurrection. Now, it's one thing to look at the Scriptures as historical documents and eyewitness testimony. It's quite another to believe that the historical events that occurred win salvation for you. So a man rose from the dead. <clears throat> That's amazing, but does it mean that you will too? Well, it turns out that the man who rose from the dead said this, these words I have spoken to you are spirit and they are life. Jesus is not just any other man. He is the good shepherd who lays down his life for the sheep and then takes his life up again. He's the bread of life from heaven. And when you trust in Him for your life, then you have life indeed. During His ministry, Jesus announced, If anyone is thirsty, let him come to me and drink. Whoever believes in me, as the Scripture has said, streams of living water will flow from within him. John goes on to explain, By this he meant the Spirit, whom those who believed in him were later to receive. Our Heavenly Father, who knew that you and I would need to hear about Jesus in order to believe in Him, He also knew that we could never believe that He's our Savior unless the Holy Spirit would work faith in our hearts. So therefore, God in His grace and mercy endows His Word with the Holy Spirit. When Jesus spoke about the kingdom of God and His ministry of salvation, when he preached and taught, the words he spoke brought the Holy Spirit and life to the people who heard them and believed. The Scriptures are not dead words that require you to respond in some way. As that says in Hebrews chapter 4, the Word of God is living and active. Sharper than any double-edged sword, it penetrates even to dividing soul and spirit, joints and marrow. It judges the thoughts and attitudes of the heart. 
the Word of God, whether it's proclaimed in the Scriptures or proclaimed in preaching that's in accord with the Scriptures, it doesn't only give you information about Jesus, it inspirits you with the Holy Spirit, and that Holy Spirit works faith. That is why our risen Lord Jesus came to His disciples in the locked room and said, Peace be with you. As the Father has sent me, even so I am sending you. And when he had said this, he breathed on them and said, Receive the Holy Spirit. Through the power of the Holy Spirit, they not only saw Jesus, but believed in him as their risen Savior. Through the Holy Spirit, they begin to proclaim to others that Jesus, their Lord, had risen from the dead. And through the power of the Holy Spirit, others not only heard about Jesus, but believed in Him as their risen Savior. And through the Word of God, whether it's devotions at home or on the radio, preaching here, even just the good news shared by another Christian with you, through that Word, you receive the Holy Spirit. And the Holy Spirit puts doubt to death in you and works faith so that you may have eternal life in Christ. But for us Christians, perhaps the most deadly doubt is not the doubt of the mind, which wonders whether Jesus really rose from the dead. And maybe it's not even the doubt of the heart, which wonders whether our Lord rose to bring life to all humankind. It may be the doubt of the conscience, which wonders whether Jesus could really love a sinner like me. You and I are all too aware of the sins that we commit, the deeds we do to others that show anything less than love, the words we say to others that tear them down, the thoughts we harbor in our hearts that we wouldn't tell anybody else in the world because they make us so ashamed. Those sins, we are very aware of them, and they rightly prick our conscience, but sometimes they wrongly feed doubt. Our gracious Father has given His Word to deal with that kind of doubt as well. Jesus told His disciples, if you forgive the sins of anyone, they are forgiven. Jesus is the Lamb of God who takes away the sins of the world, and not just the sins of the world, but the sins of you. Which sins of you? Every sin of you. He laid down his life for each and every wayward sheep, no matter how far away they have wandered. You cannot get so far away from the Lord that he has not died to bring you back to God. And you cannot sin so badly that our Savior has not died to wash even those sins away. So, to put your deaths your doubts to death, and to give you faith which brings everlasting life. Our Savior gave His apostles and His pastors and His church, and that also means each one of you, the authority to forgive sins. So if your conscience is nagging you and your sin is dragging you down into despair and doubt, find your pastor when God brings you a pastor, or find a fellow Christian, a brother or sister in Christ, and ask them to proclaim God's Word to you, the Word that, because God so loved you, He gave His only Son that if you believe in Him, you will not perish, but have everlasting life. The Word of God gives you the joy of sins forgiven, and it puts your doubts to death, and it gives you life in the name of Jesus. Blessed are those who have not seen and yet have believed, Jesus told Thomas. Blessed indeed. You are blessed because your gracious Heavenly Father has let you hear the testimony of eyewitnesses that Jesus really is risen from the dead. You are blessed because God the Father has poured out His Holy Spirit into your heart as you hear the good news about Jesus who came to wash your sins away and give you everlasting life. And God the Father has given you the joy of sins forgiven 
for the sake of Jesus through that same word. Through his word, God the Father puts your doubts to death and he gives you everlasting life. As John wrote, these things are written that you may believe that Jesus is the Christ, the Son of God, and that by believing, you may have life in his name. The peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, keep your hearts and minds through Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Christ is risen. Hallelujah. Please stand. We confess our faith in our risen Lord in the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the holy Christian church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Let us pray for the whole people of God in Christ Jesus. We praise and magnify you, gracious Father, for the resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, from the dead. Grant that we, who by your Holy Spirit believe in his resurrection, may hold firmly to the hope of everlasting life. Lord, in your mercy. We pray, gracious Father, for those who doubt whether Christ is risen from the dead. Move them to dig into the scriptures and grant that they will not only see the testimony of eyewitnesses and come to believe it, but grant that they will receive your Holy Spirit as they read your word and so come to believe that Jesus is not only risen from the dead, but he, he is risen from the dead for them to give them life everlasting. Lord, in your mercy. Make us bold, Heavenly Father, to proclaim Jesus Christ crucified, to share the good news of Jesus Christ with those around us. Open their hearts and minds that when they hear this, your word, the Holy Spirit will work in them that faith which will bring them to life everlasting. And help us, gracious Father, to be patient, even as you have been patient with us in the midst of our doubts. Lord, in your mercy, we thank and praise you, Heavenly Father, that you have appointed men and women to serve your church in various capacities, pastors to proclaim the word in preaching and teaching and administer the sacraments, teachers and DCEs and DPMs and other church workers to share the good news of Jesus with children and adults alike. Embolden all the ministers of the gospel in your church to proclaim the true and unadulterated word of God and by their work, bring your spirit into your church, that all may finally call out, Christ is risen. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for this congregation. Grant wisdom to the call committee, and we pray that you would bring a pastor to the congregation as quickly as possible. Grant them patience in the meantime. Continue to minister to them with word and sacrament. But, gracious Father, even as they wait for you, answer their prayers for a full-time pastor. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for the children and parents in the school here at Christ Lutheran Church. Grant that they will receive the education provided to them by the teachers. Grant that they will not only receive that education, but will hear and respond to your word, that receiving the Holy Spirit through the word shared with them they will come to a stronger faith in Christ and will, for those who do not have a congregation, will join this congregation in confessing Jesus Christ, crucified, 
and Jesus Christ, risen from the dead, Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who suffer in any way, particularly with physical ailments or mental health issues or in any way. Grant, even in the midst of their suffering, that they will find hope in the resurrection of Jesus Christ from the dead. For you have promised that all who die with Christ in baptism will also rise with Christ and will receive glorified and renewed bodies and life everlasting. Support and sustain those who suffer through this solid hope. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for those who mourn the loss of loved ones. We pray in particular for those who've lost Christian loved ones. Grant them that hope which comes through the promise of new life in Christ. And we pray for all who've lost loved ones. Grant them comfort and grant them faithful family and friends to surround them during these difficult times. Lord, in your mercy. We pray for all who come to this altar today. Grant that those who receive the body and blood of Christ may do so with faith, that he is risen from the dead, and that he, through the gift of his body and blood, forgives their sins. For those who receive a, a blessing, pour out your spirit upon them, that they may be strengthened in their faith. Lord, in your mercy. Into your hands, O Lord, we commend all for whom we pray, trusting in your mercy. Through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior. Amen. You may be seated. We continue with the offerings. The Lord be with you. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give him thanks and praise. It is truly good, right, and salutary that we should at all times and in all places give thanks to you, Holy Lord, Almighty Father, everlasting God. And most especially are we bound to praise you on this day for the glorious resurrection of your Son, Jesus Christ, the very Paschal Lamb, who was sacrificed for us and bore the sins of the world. By his dying, he has destroyed death. And by his rising again, he has restored to us everlasting life. Therefore, with Mary Magdalene, Peter, and John, and with all the witnesses of the resurrection, with angels and archangels, and with all the company of heaven, we laud and magnify your glorious name, evermore praising you and singing. us to pray. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us the day of our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory. Our Lord Jesus Christ, on the night when he was betrayed, took breath. And when he had given thanks, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat. This is my body, which is given for you. This do in remembrance of me. In the same way, also, after supper, he took the cup. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them, saying, Drink of it, all of you. This cup is the New Testament in my blood, which is shed for you for the forgiveness of your sins. This do as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. The peace of the Lord be with you all. And also with you. Gracious God, our Heavenly Father, 
You have given us a foretaste of the feast to come in the holy supper of your son's body and blood. Keep us firm in the true faith throughout our days of pilgrimage, that on the day of his coming, we may, together with all your saints, celebrate the marriage feast of the Lamb in his kingdom, which has no end. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. The Lord bless you and keep you. The Lord may make his face shine upon you and be gracious unto you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace. Amen. Go in peace, serve the Lord.